Good morning. We welcome you to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. We're glad to see that you're here to worship with us this morning as we continue in our season of Epiphany with the theme, An Astonishing Choice. Pastor Tom is going to be preaching from Luke chapter 5, where Jesus calls his disciples uh, to be fishers of men and women as well. And so we pray for God's continued blessings on our time together this morning on Pastor Tom's message and as God comes to us here and gives us his gifts of grace forgiveness and mercy today and always. And so would you please stand? And we worship this morning in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy will be found on the screens. Let's join in singing our gathering hymn. As we just sang in the hymn just literally a few seconds ago, we do seek the things that come from above. And that's why we gather here this morning to confess our sins, to receive that is which from above or that comes from above, that promised forgiveness from Christ. And so let's do that. Let's confess our sins. Lord, seized by your powerful promise of forgiveness, we come before you once more, claiming the renewed hearts and lives Jesus Christ has won for us. And so together we confess. Lord of light and life, we come seeking your gracious forgiveness for the dark sins that plague us. We are called to be lights in the world, yet we find ourselves stumbling in the darkness we have made for ourselves. We grab at things that cannot satisfy, wander off into selfish ways, and do the very sins we have promised to avoid. Forgive us, Lord. Give us again the light of your patient and persistent love in Jesus Christ. Help us to see his right way, to follow him, and to be those who are privileged to share the light of his salvation with all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Dear friends, Jesus has promised that the sins we forgive on earth will also be forgiven in heaven. Trusting confidently in that precious promise, I declare to you that in Jesus Christ and because of Jesus Christ, all of your sins are forgiven and you are free to share that same forgiveness with all others in your life. 
as God's word tells us. We are filled with Jesus' light of life so that we can shine among the people of this world like stars in the sky. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you, angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace, make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Miss Kristen. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's message. If you're visiting with us, we'd love to have you come down too, and you can bring adults with you too. In fact, they have a couple, well, at least one adult coming down for sure to help out. A few other adults are going to help too today. So come on up and have a seat right up here. And you need to be able to hear me, but you need to be able to see some people out there because they're going to help me with my children's message today. So glad you're here. How many of you had school all week this week? <laughs> uh, did you really? Wow, good. Not many of us have had school all week for a long time, it seems like. Did you have school this week? Good job, Louie. All right, well today, the, our, our message today this is the astonishing choice. So if I was going to choose a basketball team, you know who I'd pick? Taylor, right there. Let's have Taylor stand up, you'll see why. He's the tallest guy I know. He is tall, so I'd pick him because he's a tall guy. You could sit down again, Taylor. And if I was gonna pick a cooking team, I'd pick that guy right there, because you know what? He's a chef, he's a really, really good cook. Excellent cook, thank you. And if I was gonna pick a skating team, I'd pick that mommy right there, because she's a really good skater. And if I was gonna pick a football team, you know who I'd pick? Pastor Joe. My daddy. Yeah. Because he's the strongest guy I know. In fact, yeah, he helped push he, our car out to this week, didn't he? Also, and he also won, and he can also run from one end of the football field to the other. Yes, and if I was going to pick, yeah, can you tell me more about him later? I'd like to hear that. Okay, and if I was going to pick a singing team, I'd pick Miss Nancy over there. She's somewhere. There she is. See? Because she's a really good singer. And if I wanted the smartest team, I'd pick Dr. Hagenson right there. She's the smartest lady I know. I'd pick her. But you know, today, Jesus is, t is picking his disciples. And he doesn't pick the tallest or the smartest or the best cook or the best singer or the strongest. He picks ordinary fishermen, Peter, James, and John. They weren't very smart. At least we don't think they were. They weren't rich, but Jesus picked them. Jesus chose them to be his disciples, even though they were sinful men, just like my volunteers are sinful people, just like we're sinful people. God still chose those disciples, and he still chooses us. In fact, when Jesus got into Peter's boat, Peter said, whoa, I can't do this. I'm afraid because I am a sinful person. But Jesus still chose him. Jesus chose him to be his disciple. And because Jesus chose him, Peter, James, and John chose to follow him and to do what he asked. Now, when Jesus got into Peter's boat he and chose Peter, he changed Peter's life forever. And Jesus came into your life. Jesus already chose you. Did you know that? Jesus chose you for his team. And we don't have to be afraid. We know that we're sinful and we're not perfect. But Jesus, our, the Son of God, the Almighty God, picked you, picked all of us to be his children. He loves us so much. He wants us to live forever with him. And he wants us to share... They are, Louis, you're right. All of those people out there are God's kids. And Jesus chose them too. Even yep, and he wants us all to love God and to share that love with others. So let's pray about that, okay? And be thankful we're all on God's team. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for choosing me and for loving me. Help me to choose you 
every day and share your love with others. Amen. Thanks for coming up. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord.
A reading from 1 Corinthians. Paul writes, So with yourselves, since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, serve to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil, but in your thinking, be mature. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word... I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, He fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In our reading from Luke 5 this morning, which I just read and you just listened to, we uh, have a question pop out at us uh, right off the pages of the scripture and right off that event uh, along the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And the question is this. The question is this, folks, and this is what we're going to consider today as we look at uh, the theme and astonishing choice. The question is this. Who gets the last word? 
Now, before uh, your mind goes uh, away with all the people in your life who drive you crazy because they always have to get the last word in, uh, and if you're already doing that, remember you're in someone else's mind. Okay? They think you always have to have the last word if you think they always have to have the last word. It's not what we're talking about today. Uh, we're talking about uh, the last word uh, between uh, you and God. Who gets the last word? That's what this text is about. Who gets the last word? So let me recap it for you. Let me recap it, what I just read to you. Uh, Peter and James and John and their partners, they had spent the night fishing and they got skunked. They caught nothing, but this was not a pleasure fish. This was their livelihood. And Jesus came to the seashore and he was surrounded by people and he wanted to teach them. And these boats were there. And uh, Jesus decided that if he just cast out a little bit, they'd stay on, people would stay on the shore and he'd be able to teach them. So he picked Simon Peter's boat. And they went out. And this is a key part of the story, folks. Peter was sitting next to Jesus and he heard Jesus teach. And Jesus taught what Jesus taught, the kingdom of God. That's what he came to proclaim. That's what he came to preach. That's what he came to live. That's what he came to show. Well, as they went out, Jesus taught. Sermon ended. Everyone said amen. I don't know. Uh, I don't think they even took the offering at that point. But, okay, at, at that point, uh, Jesus turns to Simon Peter, and he says to Simon Peter, let's go a little deeper, deeper, Peter. I want you to catch some fish here. Let's go. Go a little deeper. And here's where the question of who gets the last word comes in. Because these were not good circumstances for those fishermen that day. They'd caught nothing. Peter and James and John and their buddies, they knew that sea like you know the back of your hand. And they knew that at that moment they weren't in the right spot to catch fish and those fish weren't going to be caught because they weren't there. Would the circumstance have the last word? See the circumstance? Terrible circumstance. Then there were the feelings. Oh my goodness, by this point they had spent all night trying to catch fish. We can imagine their muscles ached. They were tired. They were discouraged. Would their feelings have the last word? But you see, folks, who would have the last word in this conversation wasn't blowing in the wind. The answer wasn't blowing in. The answer was in the prayer. The answer was in Simon Peter's words to Jesus. And when you speak words to God, you are praying. Listen to how he prayed. Listen to Simon Peter's prayer. Okay, Jesus said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing but at your word I will let down the nets. You know the rest of the story, don't you? They let down the nets. Boats are sinking. There's fish everywhere. What if he had prayed that prayer the other way around? What if he had said, Master, you tell me to let down the nets, but I got to tell you, We've worked all night and we know this sea and there's no fish tonight. Who would have had the last word? The circumstance would have had the last word. The feeling would have had the last word. Oh, folks, Peter was, Peter was an emotional guy. Did you catch it in the prayer? Everything we know about Peter is he was an emotional guy, sometimes to his detriment, Sometimes to his blessing. When he prayed that prayer, listen to it again. Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word I will let down the nets. He didn't stuff the circumstance. He didn't ignore it. He didn't stuff the feelings. He didn't stuff the frustration. He named them. But the last word... Belong to Christ. The last word belonged to Jesus. 
Oh, folks. And the reason he would do that was because he listened to the sermon. He sat in that boat and he listened to Jesus. And because of what Jesus said, he let down the net. Now, you might not be a fisher person. But who gets the last word in your prayers? When you pray a prayer like this, is this what it sounds like? Jesus is always with me, but I feel so alone. Or do you pray, I really feel alone today, but Jesus says he's always with me. So I'll go forward knowing he is. How about this one? Yeah, God tells me to forgive, but I'm really hurt right now. And I really don't care to forgive that person for what they did to me. Or does the prayer become, I'm really hurt right now. Oh, this hurts to the core of my being. But God's word tells me to forgive And I'm going to work on it. How about this one? God's word says not to be afraid. But boy, I'm facing huge struggles. I'm up against it. Like Elijah the prophet. And we'll hear from him in Lent. Oh, Lord. They've taken everyone else and I'm the only one left. And now they're coming to get me too. Referring to Ahab and Jezebel. Or do you pray like this? I'm really struggling. I'm facing all kinds of problems. But God's word says not to be afraid because he's with me always to the very end of the age. Or how about this one? The Lord wants me to work on my job as though I'm working for him, but he doesn't know my boss. He doesn't know how difficult it is to work for him or her. Or do you pray that prayer? My boss is so hard to please. But God clearly says to work as though I'm working for him. So that's what I'll do. Or the Bible tells us that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin, but I feel so guilty, so dirty. And so ashamed. Or do you pray that prayer? I feel so guilty, so dirty, and so ashamed. But the scripture says that if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Or how about this one? The Lord wants me to be generous with my time, my talent, and my money on behalf of his cause in the world through my church. But I have so much other stuff to do. And so many other ways to spend my money. Or do you pray, I do have ways to spend my money and I will never run out of them. And I have so many ways to invest my time. But the Lord wants me to be generous and support his cause through my church. And so I will give of my time, my talent, and my treasure. Folks, who has the last word? And what makes all of this possible is the sermon theme today, an astonishing choice. Because what Peter did... Did you catch it? When Simon Peter saw what Jesus had done in his life that day, he just looked at him and he said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Got news for you, Peter. He knew that. 
Got news for you, beautiful Savior. He knows you're a sinner. He knows you don't deserve to be in his presence. He knows you don't give him the last word. Got news for you. He chose you anyway. He chose you anyway. And Peter heard those amazing words. These were words of absolution and forgiveness from Jesus. Do not be afraid. I know who you are, Peter. Don't be afraid. You're my son. And Peter kept growing. Read about him all through the Gospels and go into the book of Acts. He always was learning, sometimes painfully, how to give God the last word because he didn't want to. Sums up in Acts 10. Remember him and Cornelius? If you're familiar with the story. And Peter learned that he couldn't pick and choose who he would talk to about Christ because Christ wanted him to talk to everybody. And Christ got the last word. And you know, folks, I saw this lived out right in front of my eyes this week. This last word business. We had a funeral here on Wednesday. Clara Sweeney, longtime member, 92 years she lived on this earth. 92 years. Clara was quite a gal quite a gal and on the funeral sheet she left for her family and for me she included a prayer by Peter Marshall that's Peter Marshall the one time chaplain of the United States Senate not Peter Marshall the one time host of the Hollywood Squares I mean you got to keep these things straight and know who you're talking about this is a prayer by Peter Marshall and Clara Uh, shared this and I used it at her funeral on Wednesday and it ties so much into this scripture reading and into our life with Christ into the battle because folks the battle for the last word is between our old nature and our new nature because our old nature wants the last word every time we want to sin Do not think you don't, because you do. And Peter Marshall wrote this prayer about our relationship with God. And it's so Clara, if you knew Clara. It's so Clara. But let me read it to you. Forgive us, O God, for the doubting suspicion with which we regard the heart of God. We have faith in checks and banks, in trains and airplanes, in cooks and in strangers who drive us in cabs or Ubers. Marshall didn't write that. He was back in the 40s and 50s. And lifts. Forgive us for our stupidity. And if you knew Clara Sweeney, you knew that she called stupid, stupid. Forgive us for our stupidity, and this is stupid, that we have faith in people whom we do not know and are so reluctant to have faith in thee who knowest us all together. If you don't speak the king's English, let me translate it for you. We are so reluctant to have faith in you who knows us completely. We are always striving to find a complicated way through life when thou hast a plan and we refuse to walk in it. So many troubles we bring on ourselves. How silly we are. Wilt thou give us that faith 
that we can deposit in the bank of thy love so that we may receive the dividends and interest that thou art so willing to give us. Biblical phrase, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And give me the faith to give you the last word. We ask it all in the lovely name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Who gets the last word? What blessings would Peter have forfeited? If he had said that day on the Sea of Galilee, no, there's no fish there, Jesus. I learned something else, or actually I knew it. I was renewed in what I know through Clara's funeral on Wednesday too when we went to Crystal Lake Cemetery. Ready for this one, folks? Christ had the last word. Words that sounded something like this. We now commend Clara's body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. May God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who by his blood redeemed this body, may God the Holy Spirit who by holy baptism sanctified this body to be his temple, keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Last word. Why would we wait? Why would we wait? I challenge you this morning. Give God the last word in your family life. Want to know what the last word is? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Wives, love and honor and respect your husbands. Children, obey your parents. Parents, raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Last word. That's how he wants us to function. Give him the last word in your vocational life. Give him the last word in your community life. Give him the last word here at Beautiful Savior. I challenge you to do that, and you can challenge me right back. You can challenge me and Pastor Joe and ask us, are you giving God the last word? That's what we strive to do. Let's not wait. Let's not wait till the cemetery. Let's not wait to the columbarium. Let's not wait. Let's give them the last word now. Who knows how many fish will end up in the boat? Who knows how many fish will end up in the boat? The one who has the last word knows. A blessed epiphany. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you please stand? <laughs> Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the God who has the last word. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing for prayer. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church. Give us courage to answer your call and keep us faithful to your life-giving word. Send us out to be the good news of your love for all people, here and at Salem Lutheran Church in Tomball, Texas, and Family of Faith Lutheran Church in Falcon, Colorado. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the nations, grant wisdom to those in authority, strengthen peacekeepers, ambassadors, military personnel, and disaster relief workers. Protect families who have to leave their homes because of war, natural disasters, or rejection by their communities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those in need, for those whose lives are in turmoil, for those who wrestle with addiction, for those burdened by anxiety and self-doubt, for those who grieve and those who are ill, especially those we name before you now, silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our local schools, their students and teachers, provide energy, insight, and patience to all in our schools following this period of harsh winter weather. Sharpen the focus on learning and teaching that having done the hard work, they will see the new achievements and successes for which to give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Amy Neiman and our youth ministry, Prepare the hearts and minds of students getting ready for next weekend's youth quake, for this summer's national youth gathering and Kansas work camp, and for those attending the First Communion instruction. Plant your living word in them that they will grow strong in faith and life, giving pleasing lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Brenda Meyer and our children's ministry, instill in our children a desire to serve others in the name of Jesus. Bless the homeless who will receive the sandwiches the children provide through the 363-day food program, that both the givers and the receivers will know there is hope for the future in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For this assembly, for those who nurture fellowship within this congregation, and those who reach out in service to our community. Open to us opportunities to welcome our new members with the love you have shown us. In all we say and do, help us learn to give you the last word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died and now rest in your presence, especially Jim and Nancy Brogy, as they mourn the passing of Jim's mother. Sustain us in hope of the resurrection and bring us into the joy of unending life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And our worship continues with the offering. Please rise for prayer. Merciful God, receive the gifts we bring, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Through this meal, unite us as your body shining with the light of your justice and mercy, for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness might give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Dear friends, Jesus comes to us in this meal, his body and blood, in with and under the bread and wine given and shed so that we experience his forgiveness, his love, so that we get to hear God having the final word in our lives. So come and hear that word for yourself in this meal. The table is set. Please be seated.
Would you please stand? And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his joy and in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we bless you that you have brought us to the mountaintop and fed us with the life and light of your Son. Send us in his name from this place to bring light into dark corners, healing where lives are torn, and nourishment to every hungry heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We have a couple of announcements here this morning, so if you would please quickly be seated. Um, Also, next Sunday, 9.45 hour, we're doing our India presentation, talking about what exactly we did when we were over there. So come check it out during that 9.45 hour. And then also, Lent is fast approaching. Uh, Ash Wednesday is roughly about three weeks, March 6th. Um, And in light of that uh, Lent season that's coming, starting February 23rd and 24th, there will be a table out in our gathering space full of Lent materials that will be coming up for that season. And what I really got to share about that is if you feel feel like you're not connected yet to Beautiful Savior, if you're looking for opportunities to connect, or if you just want to grow deeper in that relationship that God has made with you, check out that table when it shows up February 23rd and 24th. There's going to be lots of neat opportunities to connect, to grow, and to serve. So please, check that out uh, when that shows up here in a couple of weeks as we get ready for the season of Lent. So would you please stand? And receive the blessing of our Lord as you go into your week. The God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us pray together. O Lord, give us a mind that is humble, quiet, peaceable, patient, and charitable, and a taste of your Holy Spirit in all our thoughts, words, and deeds. O Lord, give us a lively faith, a firm hope, a fervent charity, a love of you. Take from us all lukewarmness in meditation and all dullness in prayer. Give us fervor and delight in thinking of you, your grace, and your tender compassion toward us. Give us, good Lord, the grace to work for the things for which we pray. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.